We are all curious about the future and what's in store for us personally. And our loving creator doesn't want his people to be in the dark and worried with fear of the unknown. So he inspired the Bible to be a guidebook and map for our life's journeys. Bible prophecy does indeed satisfy much of our curiosity about the future, but God has greater purposes for it than just that. These are wonderful spiritual purposes. I think it's safe to say that biblical prophecy in the church has always been a controversial one. It's not just biblical prophecy, but the prophetic ministry as a whole. While some believe that it's an essential element of the church, and a way to receive guidance and direction from God. Others believe that it's outdated and irrelevant in today's society. But despite the controversy surrounding it, there are still those who believe in its relevance and importance, both within the church and in the broader world. So, what is prophecy? You might be asking. A prophecy? is a prediction of something that will happen in the future. To put it in layman terms, see, God is the author of prophecy in the Bible, and that should give us a whole lot of peace today, because no matter what is going on around us, we can know that God knows what is happening. Not only does he know, but he is in control directing the affairs of the world and not taking a backseat. There is a scripture I want you to remember that will help you as you desire to understand prophecy. In Isaiah chapter 46 verse 8 it says, Remember this and stand firm, recall it to mind. You transgressors, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish all my purpose. Watching biblical prophecy unfold while staying close to God is something Jesus strongly implores us to do. Luke 21 verse 36 Jesus said that the purpose for our doing so is that we might stand or take our place before the Son of Man and God desires to place us in the role of kings and priests when Christ returns serving under him during his millennial reign on earth watching prophecy helps us to remain focused on God's plan, to establish the kingdom of God on earth, and it gives us motivation to prepare now so we can help Christ rule over those humans who survived the great tribulation and live during his coming millennial reign. We need to change our minds about biblical prophecy. It's not something to be feared, and it's not something we need to run away from. Biblical prophecy is a wonderful gift from God. Through fulfilled prophecy, we can have confidence in what the Bible predicts. Through future prophecies, we can know in advance what is going to occur. As Jesus was speaking about the future in the book of Luke, there is something I want to highlight. He replied, don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Messiah, and saying, The time has come, but don't believe them. And when you hear of wars and insurrections, don't panic. Yes, these things must take place first, but the end won't follow immediately. Luke 21 Verses 8 to 9. Don't panic. Don't fear. Prophecy is a wonderful gift for us, his sons and daughters. So, 
Let's move on and look at five prophecies that are about to be fulfilled. Most of the prophecies I will mention have already begun to be fulfilled today. But before I dive into that, I'd like to share insights from a few anonymous individuals who learned about biblical prophecy, which I found enlightening. Our relationship with God deepens when we understand the role of biblical prophecy in our lives. It was so comforting and inspiring to learn God's long-range plan for mankind. What a blessing that God lets us know in advance what to expect and how we can be prepared. What I had been taught in another church left me somewhat confused and fearful. Now, the more I understand what the Bible teaches about the past, present and future, the more peace I feel. More and more, I could see that God is in control. He can protect us from anything. He has a time for everything and he knows what's best for each of us. Now that I'm aware of the strong faith shown by figures in the Bible, along with God's promises and future plans, I feel courageous, peaceful, and confident that God is guiding my life according to His will. I love those responses. That's what happens when we have a right view and mindset of biblical prophecy. Having the wrong mindset can get you in a state of perpetual fear and anxiety. So, let's get into our Bibles and get ready to know God more as we study prophecy. And without wasting any more time, let's get into the five prophecies. Shortly before His crucifixion and resurrection, Jesus Christ delivered a major prophecy of end-time events recorded in Matthew chapter 24, the book of Mark chapter 13, and Luke chapter 21. According to the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 3, he was asked by his disciples, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus responded with a description of conditions and events that would lead up to his second coming. Moreover, he said that when these signs became evident, his return would occur within one generation. Matthew chapter 24, verse 34. Could this be that generation? For nearly 2,000 years since Christ's prophecy, Many have believed their time was the era of his return, only to be proven wrong. But interestingly, there are a number of prophecies in the Bible that could not be fulfilled until our modern era, the post-World War II period. So let's look at five prophecies that are about to be fulfilled. And like I said earlier, some of them have already begun to be fulfilled. Number one, the human race will have the ability to exterminate itself. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 21 and 22, describing world conditions prior to his second coming, Jesus said, for there will be greater anguish than at any time since the world began, and it will never be so great again. In fact, Unless that time of calamity is shortened, not a single person will survive. But it will be shortened for the sake of God's chosen ones. The main message that Jesus Christ brought was of the coming kingdom of God. This is described as the gospel in Mark chapter 1 verse 14. Gospel means good news. While some prophecies concerning events prior to the establishment of the kingdom can seem negative, we should always keep in mind that the central focus of Bible prophecy is the good news of the coming kingdom of God. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 22, shows us that if Jesus Christ does not intervene in world affairs, 
the human race will be faced with extinction. It's important to understand that for the past 70 years, humanity has been able to destroy itself. This started when the United States and the Soviet Union made very powerful bombs, leading to a situation where both knew they could destroy each other completely. Of course, the more nuclear powers we have in the world, the more likely it is that someone will use this deadly force for evil. The good news in all this is that Christians have an assurance that Jesus Christ will intervene to save mankind from annihilation. This prophecy could not be fulfilled until man had potential for self-extinction through weapons of mass destruction. Again, only in the last 70 years has this become possible. Number 2. War in Israel The book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, says, This message concerning the fate of Israel came from the Lord. This message is from the Lord, who stretched out the heavens, laid the foundations of the earth, and formed the human spirit. I will make Jerusalem like an intoxicating drink that makes the nearby nations stagger when they send their enemies to besiege Jerusalem and Judah. On that day, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock. All the nations will gather against it to try and move it, but they will only hurt themselves. It is almost 50 years to the day the last time Israel was officially at war in what is known as the Yom Kippur War back in 1973 when she was attacked by Egypt, Syria, and others. But this is a different kind of war. Thousands of rockets rained on Israel from multiple directions and Hamas gunmen invaded by land, sea, and sky. Now, hundreds of people have been murdered and kidnapped, employing tactics reminiscent of ISIS. This includes targeting young women and children, launching large-scale rocket attacks on civilian areas, and terrorist incursions into cities and settlements near the Gaza border. Interesting how it always comes back to Jerusalem. The Bible predicted thousands of years ago that the end times would revolve around Jerusalem, not San Francisco, not Los Angeles, not Moscow, not Paris, but Jerusalem, this tiny little city in this sliver of land will play a key role in the events of the last days. It's the focal point of end times events. It's interesting when you think of it in the context of what Zechariah says. This war with Israel is still unfolding. So what should we do in the meantime? There are two things the Bible tells us to do. Jesus said, Now, when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Luke chapter 21, verse 28. That's what we need to be doing, looking for the soon return of Jesus Christ. But we also need to pray. The Bible tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 122, verse six. We want to pray that they arrive at some kind of peace. We want to pray that this horrific terrorism stops and that they're able to get their hostages back. And we want to pray that God places his hand of protection upon them during this unprecedented conflict. Number three, instant worldwide communications and God's final witnesses. Another end time Bible prophecy could not be fulfilled until we entered the era of instant worldwide communication. In Matthew, 
chapter 24, the book of Mark, chapter 13, and Luke 21. Jesus outlines a series of global disasters that will increasingly occur, leading up to a point where fear grips humanity. As Luke, chapter 21, verse 26, describes, Discerning an increase in the scale of these events and reacting to them requires knowing about them. At the time this prophecy was given, it could have been many months or years before people heard about various disasters, and many would never hear about them at all, much less be able to put together the fact that catastrophes were on some kind of global increase. This only became a possibility with the widespread growth of newspapers, various media outlets, social networks, and mass communication methods. Yet, the level of awareness and consequent fear in many that Christ speaks of implies an even greater availability of rapid electronic communications. Only in recent years have technological advancements made it possible for events in Revelation 11, such as the whole world seeing the fate of God's final two witnesses, to happen. These two witnesses, reminiscent of other biblical prophets like Elijah and Elisha, will carry God's final warning to the world in the last three and a half years, leading up to Christ's return. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy 1,260 days. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verses 7 to 10 says, Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their bodies three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them. Make merry and send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Everyone around the world will be able to see their bodies lying dead in Jerusalem for three and a half days. This was not possible before satellite television, portable communications, devices, and the internet. Again, only in the last few years has it become possible for this prophecy to be fulfilled. It still lies in the future, of course, but only now it is clearly possible for this to take place. Number four, the gospel will be preached in all the world. In his major end time prophecy, Jesus answers the question posed by the disciples. When will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Matthew 24, verse 3. After listing several signs of the nearness of his coming, he reveals that, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it, and then the end will come. Matthew 24, verse 14. The gospel is the good news of the coming kingdom of God. This message could not be preached around the world without the Bible and the freedom of religion. Both came gradually with the ascendancy of the English-speaking peoples from the 16th century until the present day. However, it was only with the technological advances of television and radio and other means of mass communication after World War II and their widespread acceptance that it became possible to reach hundreds of millions of human beings with the message of the Bible. The gospel of the kingdom of God will continue to be preached to all nations. Even so, during the last 50 years, it has not been possible to reach all countries. The former communist nations did not allow freedom of religion. China, with one quarter of the world's people, 
still does not. Other nations also try to suppress the publication of biblical truth and even the Bible itself. In several nations where Islam is the predominant religion, there are varying degrees of restrictions on the practice and expression of religious beliefs outside of the state-endorsed faith. In some countries, people risk the death penalty for changing religion. But the internet is changing everything. It is much harder for governments to control. The gospel message of the coming kingdom of God is still going out to the world. It will finish. When God has decided that his work is completed and the time is right for the final end time events to take place. Number five. The second return of Jesus Christ. I left the best for last. There is so much bad news today. Good news can seem unbelievable or at least overblown. But the return of Jesus Christ is real and it's the best news ever. After Jesus ascended into heaven, angels spoke to his disciples and offered this promise of his return. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here, staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven. But someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. Today, all the signs point to humanity, rapidly approaching the brink of destruction by many avenues at once. The nuclear threat has morphed from a two-way cold war to an unpredictable multiplayer game, likely to soon include terrorist organizations as well as totalitarian regimes. Throw in chemical and biological weapons of mass destruction, conventional arms races, pandemics, food shortages, water scarcity, natural disasters, financial meltdowns, cyber attacks, racial hatreds, governmental corruption, and breakdown of the family. And you get a distressingly bleak picture, but an incredible thing will happen on the way to our global genocide. God promises to intervene. Jesus Christ, who left the Mount of Olives through the clouds, will come back the same way. He will save us from self-destruction. That is, after he swiftly defeats the misguided armies of the world who will attack him. But that's another story. Here is a short list of what he will do when he comes back again. Jesus will heal bodies and minds. Isaiah chapter 30 verses 19 to 26. He will cure human hearts. Ezekiel 11 verses 19 to 20. Everyone will be taught the way of peace. Micah chapter 4 verses 1 to 4. There is so much more amazing things that will happen when Jesus comes again. But we need to be patiently endure. In Revelation chapter 14 verse 12, the Bible says, this means that God's holy people must endure persecution patiently, obeying his commands and maintaining their faith in Jesus. As we conclude, my hope is that your mind has changed about prophecy and that you understand its relevance today and in your personal relationship with Jesus. We don't need to fear prophecy. When people wonder about the events that are happening in our world today, they ask, where is this all going? That is a valid question. But those who know the Bible know where it's going. Everything is leading to a better place. History ends with our hands raised in victory. We don't have to be afraid of the future if we know the future God has planned for us, even if it's in part. With our understanding of biblical prophecy, we can be a sort of watchman to the blind or the fearful and people who don't know Christ. 
A watchman was to sound a warning whenever he saw danger approaching. Today, God's church, you and me, serve in the role of spiritual watchman. This partly explains why prophecy is so important and why God wants his church to teach and preach his prophecies. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance.